On a cold January morning, a team of scientists from the University of Rhode Island heads to the waters surrounding America's first offshore wind farm. They're studying sea life around the structures that lie just a few miles off Block Island. We designed our sampling strategy to take samples close to the turbine foundation and then extend outwards. The team is collecting data needed to better understand the reef effect created by the turbines and evaluate whether the impact is positive or negative over time. Overall, the colonization of the structure happens relatively quickly and the change in the bottom community can take four or five years to really show up. A grab sampler collects small chunks of the seafloor that are carefully evaluated for any life. We knew we had to take a lot of samples to be able to accurately detect change. We collected 121 samples and that gave us just over 18,000 individual organisms that were counted. A second piece of equipment, a float camera, lowers to a set distance above the seafloor taking a picture every three seconds. The images are high enough resolution where you can actually see the tubes that some of these worms and amphipods build. By sampling the area over several years, the team will build a comprehensive picture of how the area is changing over time as a result of the wind farm. Nearby, a second team of researchers from the University of Rhode Island and Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute are deploying hydrophones to monitor underwater sound created by the wind farm. The team evaluates both the volume and spread of sound generated by the wind farm's construction and operation. And, and it allows us to assess whether this is uh, injurious to animals or, or people. Getting good data requires extensive sampling to account for the many factors affecting sound underwater. That involves the shape of the seabed and the shape of the subsea floor, the ocean temperature and, and salinity and currents. These studies are part of a comprehensive project funded by the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management to monitor the wind farm. While we want to see energy development, we also want to make sure that we're responsible stewards for the ocean. And so with this first wind farm, it was the opportunity to go out and make those measurements. Everything from the laying of the cable to connect the wind farm to the power grid to each stage of construction and operation of the wind farm is being studied. You can take that information and you can put it into your predictive models of what will happen in the future. Initial models predicted a fairly large sediment plume would be created laying the 25 miles of undersea cable to connect the wind farm. But monitoring the operation with acoustic backscatter sonar showed the plume was actually too small to detect. So it's important to get that real information so that our predictions in the future are better. In other cases, the predictions from the models have turned out to be correct. For instance, the airborne sound from the spinning turbines was verified to be inaudible from Block Island. We have taken measurements over approximately three months, and we weren't able to detect the, the turbines at that distance at all. The underwater sound from operations has turned out to be relatively minor as well. It was less intense than a, than a fishing boat going by. And the construction activity appears to have little long-term physical impact on the seabed. The features that were made are kind of ha half healed already. But one effect of construction the scientists knew would be significant was the sound of pile driving to anchor the turbine foundations to the seafloor. It's something that occurs over a fairly short period of time, but that's where you have probably the most disturbance to the environment. And so with this first wind farm, it was the opportunity to go out and make those measurements while it was being constructed. Above the water, the sound was clearly audible and quite loud close to construction. Around about 500 meters away, it was approaching 100 dB, but that, that trails off quite rapidly in the air as you go away. But sound travels much farther through water and has the potential to cause harm or alter the behaviors of sea life the acoustic environment affects these animals. You want to make sure as best you can that any impacts are minimized. So the acoustic team developed a plan to capture the full range of underwater sound created by the pile driving. Some of our hydrophones, which are underwater microphones, we set at high gain, very sensitive, and some we set at a little lower gain and less sensitive, and it turned out the sound came right in between. The team set hydrophones near the construction, and farther away they towed an array of hydrophones behind a boat and dipped a hydrophone at several locations to build a comprehensive acoustic profile of the sound. First you have to understand what it is, how loud it is, how far it can travel, and then you can start talking about, well, how best can we reduce it or change it if, if necessary. This is giving us really good data 
to try to refine our models and our understanding of how the propagation into the ocean carries and how the animals hear it. Ultimately, it is about collecting quality data to make scientifically informed decisions going forward. Everything gets better when you get data and you can get out and compare your theory or your model to what is actually measured. And the more measurements we do, the better the modeling gets. And this is a great opportunity to get out there right before it happened and while things were occurring and then afterwards and learn what actually does occur so that when we go out into the future, we can predict what will happen based on better information. This information will be incorporated into BOEM's Environmental Review of Future Offshore Wind Farm Projects.